Uh, this painting represents the distance between the observer and the wall. Uh, a hand touches the globe and confuses it with the wall. Uh, it's, now, it's nice to see how our body is able to focus on things. Since uh, 2013, I have been working on a photo project named uh, the Non-Imaginary Museum. In this project, I work with uh, Google Art Project, which is a platform that allows you to visit a large part of the world cultural heritage without uh, leaving your house. Uh, Google Art Project uses a similar interface as the Google Street View. Uh, the virtual tours are constructed by multiple photographic shots. All together, they create a series of tunnels to map these cultural scenes. Uh, we move inside a bubble of images that imitate a similar perception of the human vision. The machine corresponds to a poor copy of the human body. Everything is displayed from the same height, everything with the same deep of file. Google App Project. The title of this series uh, comes from the André Malou famous book, The Imaginary Museum. In this book, uh, Malou is proposing an idea of a museum similar to a book or a photo album. This museum can be filled with uh, works from different times and places in the world, thanks to the ability of reproducing images. A flat museum of an uh, universal encyclopedia that is placed in the center of our heads. This museum of Malgu have had a huge influence on how museums were representing images based on the relations between them. A museum without walls that is inspired by the simultaneous possibilities of the image technique. We can imagine uh, a data server that hosts all the artworks in the world. On the other hand, Google consolidates this illustrated museum idea by digitalizing many artworks in high resolution. The promise of visibility has allowed Google to have access to many art museums and collections globally. At the same time, this high resolution has its own complexity. For example, uh, the high quality of this image has made many Western artists and museums, mainly based in the US, do not give permissions to Google to reproduce the, the, their works. In 1961, André Malraux, while being the Minister of Culture in France, funded the Art Museum of Le Havre. There, he put in place part of his ideas about what a modern art center should be. In 1999, the museum was renamed to André Malgou Museum of Modern Art.
uh, here inside uh, André Mala Malagu Non-Imaginary Museum, we see an artwork that is blurred. The series of Non-Imaginary Museum is a collection of more than 500 screenshots where I have a document views where something is removed from the image. This negativity appears for various reasons. Uh, many artworks are copyrighted and they require permission for, from artists or the trust to be presented. In the US, uh, the works are protected for 70 years after the author's death. And this explains why artists such as Picasso, Duchamp, or Warhol do not appear or are deleted in Google Art projects. Here is a selection of uh, those uh, screenshots. Uh, sometimes we can find uh, some elements blur from the museums because they consider it that as a noise. No? In this case, it's a bit absurd because it's a door. But uh, of course, uh, human bodies uh, are also eliminated from the platform. Um, temporal exhibitions usually are blur. And uh, sometimes uh, we find uh, strange things. Uh, here uh, we see a, a painting, uh, the title is uh, Friends, 1896 by Ignacio Zuluaga. Uh, it's been more than 70 years since uh, uh, Zuluaga dies, and yet the image is still blue. Um, it is unclear, but uh, I think the reason is because uh, the museum was digitalized in 2012, uh, which uh, this year didn't meet the 70 years copyright time frame. Uh, sometimes looks like uh, museums are outside of time. This is a painting. In, in the serie also we can see how uh, the technique to blur the image becomes more sophisticated. Like a flat surface. Or here, it's complicated to know if, what is the artwork. Uh, this area explores the breakdown of the simulation. 
the failure, the failure of a perfect representation when the capture, capturing of the image fails, uh, when deficiency becomes visible, when something appears and it takes us out of the time that Google has proposed. Some museums uh, reserve the rights for some specific artworks because uh, they produce merchandise for these images. Uh, the typical gift shop where you always want to buy. Uh, most of the museums have a store, but Google, our project, does not. So I thought uh, of an idea to earn uh, some money. And uh, I decided to open a gift, a, a gift shop for Google Art Project. Uh, Warhol, Michael Jackson, I think. And this is our shop. the shop of Google Art Project or the Imaginary Museum. Van Gogh uh, Sunflower. Duchamp. Uh, Mona Lisa with uh, mustaches. Uh, this project talks about the museum as a metaphor, uh, what uh, should be seen and what not, what should be remembered and what not, who, decide, who decides what to look and who has the right to look. Uh, Google is turning the world to an exhibition. Um, I think next week, uh, Geraldine Juarez uh, will talk better about this concept, the world as exhibitions. Moreover, other aspects of visibility have to do with uh, digitalization and telecommunication. A place where everything is datificate uh, with no place to hide. At the same time, uh, we are or craving for more and more visibility, higher and higher resolution, where image, images learn to capture our attention. As we have seen, these works are blurred because their time of economic exploitation continues because uh, they are commerci commercialized in another place or another format. Normally, if you are working, you are not in the museum. The blur image is a form of, of absence in relation with the temporalities of work. There are some politics of the resolution in relation to the right to look. And we can see some typologies about the way in which they appear. Hamlet. Uh, we can talk about something called uh, lack image. In a streaming broadcast, uh, there is a set of protocols that maintain the stability of the image. Uh, it, its objective is to preserve the feeling of the flow and synchronization. When a data packet is lost in telecommunication, the algorithm invents the missing data, invents the pixel. Then the lack image is the result of an interpolation that invents the image between two images. The lack image is the apparency of a temporality in the cracks of the flow.
in uh, Jean-Luc Godard movie, uh, Van der Paar, uh, the three characters talk about uh, an American who had the record for the fastest visit of the Louvre Museum. Uh, so they decide to beat his record by running through the museum. Uh, running is a, metaf is a metaphor for the cinematic experience that opposes to uh, the static contemplation in the plastic arts. Uh, Bertolucci could resist uh, doing a remake of this part, and I could resist redoing it inside Google Art Project. Uh, Palace of Versailles in one minute and eight seconds. Another type of uh, the blur image is like uh, a pre preview, uh, something that anticipates the image, uh, does not invent information, radically reduce its resolution to anticipate it or in case of failure to replace it. We can see in different websites of platforms like uh, Instagram, <laughs> is uh, the image before an image, an image that demands a position in the space, an image that claims a place so it cannot be occupied by another image. Digital images do not appear on an empty plane or on a gap. They appear on a blue reform of itself. Other video. It's a video inside Google Art Project, and in one moment I disconnect internet. I think it doesn't work. Good. Sorry.
sa offline museum. Years ago, the Google App project works different. Um, when you disconnect internet, uh, you have this kind of image. Everything is gray. Google as a coordinated system. I want to finish this talk. Uh, with uh, an artwork I actually discovered in uh, Google App Project. Uh, it's a drawing by Joaquin Torres Garcia, America Invertida, 1943. I found uh, this work tattooed on the arm of someone at the Morella Cells Institute in Brazil. in one of these bodies that uh, was supposed to be removed by Google Art Project. This is the screenshot. Um, a photograph of a skin in contact with the map, uh, where the earth itself uh, does not have an up or downside. For me, Mm, this image represents the disorientation that is created by the digitalization of the world. It unveils the political shadow which operates to control the visible. Perhaps the blue image is the class when uh, multiple realities and temporalities overlap, uh, frictions that uh, the vision regime tries to cover it. As a vertigo in the vertical perspective of the computational planisphere. Um, thank you. Um, if we have some time, maybe it's a moment for questions, comments. Thank you very much, Mario. Um, I have. Uh, um, we'll keep an eye on the on the uh, chat just in case some questions come in. Um, but it's very interesting to see uh, the low quality uh, images uh, throughout the presentation when people are struggling with their connections. Um, I don't know if people will be aware of which ones were the right uh, low quality images and which ones are the. Uh, the ones that are supposed to be uh, not um, pixelated. Um, in terms of the uh, the, the copyrights, um, do you know? Actually, I was wondering if uh, even if to to sell the the bag with the pixelated image of uh, Andy Warhol's artwork, whether there will be a, an issue. Because now that everybody understands, as you you, you you yourself suggest, like oh, that's probably Michael Jackson's uh, Andy Warhol. So it is clear, even though it's pixelated, that it's actually 
um, there is a, co a copyright issue. You know, because uh, I think uh, I suppose the point is that Google has uh, a number of approaches in terms of the uh, um, how all the, these images are managed, and in many cases they're they're removed complete, completely, um, or probably uh, nowadays they're uh, re removed completely. But uh, um, in some cases you can still uh, still see them. No, it's, uh, uh, even the blur image is problematic. Um... But I think when you use the blue image, uh, you move the responsibility of the copyright. Because, um, uh, in that moment, it's Google, the, the actor, uh, to generate this uh, blue. Uh, it's, uh, it's a Google image. In the other case, it's uh, from the family of Warhol, I don't know, uh, um, institution. But maybe we can re uh, make a copyright for blue something. I don't know. Come again, a copyright for? Um, maybe they, they have a copyright for this kind of blue. Um, it's uh, a specific way to remove things. Um, I don't know. It's funny to think about that. Okay. Um... So, uh, as you know, if you want, you can uh, throw some questions there via the chat. Um, I don't know if, uh, Mona, if you want to uh, comment something. Yeah, so thanks, Mario, for your insights. I was just wondering, like, going through these pages for, like, seven years, what was the weirdest thing you came across? Um, the, during, during these seven years? Yeah. Um, during seven years, I, I was working in these museums, uh, but in very regular way. And I don't know, depends. Uh, at the beginning, I focus in one thing, and now I prefer or surprise me other kind of thing. Uh, usually, I yeah, make a screenshot of everything is for me something special or yeah this idea of uh, break the simulation and yeah with this material i try to generate a small narrative or something like that but um, all these uh, digital landscapes are very controlled and it's complicated to find very interesting things I mean, in terms of, I was just curious in terms of uh, the installation of the work uh, of this this work or this performance, or uh, how how um, does it translate to the actual gallery space to the to the vacuum? Uh, I don't know. I never did. Um, <laughs> no, uh, it's for me. It's like a documentation and. Um, Depends if in the future I have the opportunity to do something, I can I can try different ideas. But for now, it's only it's a blog, it's online. I check museums and uh, uh, put the image on the blog. And that's is live available for everybody to see. Uh, yeah, no, the uh, right with museums. Uh, it's, it's a blog. It's open and it's like a on process. Okay, okay. Um, okay, uh, I think, uh, uh, I don't know if uh, anybody wants to uh, uh, share some thoughts or some questions. Uh, we have uh, Bera here actually, uh, who is uh, uh, asking, have you worked the National Gallery of Ireland via Google? And if yes, what have you observed? Um, I think no. In in Ireland, uh, I only found uh, opera or something like a theater, um, very interesting place. But uh, I don't remember this museum. I have to say that uh, Mario actually, for at least for what I know, he has been in Ireland because in 2011 he happened to be one of the uh, volunteers of Photo Ireland Festival. Just. As life, uh, as life will have it, um, uh, but you, but you were here in Dublin for a while. Then uh, I, I suppose maybe with a different uh, mindset. 
Um, and maybe, maybe I suppose Vera is recommending you to actually walk through the National Gallery of Ireland uh, via Google, you know, um, to see, because uh, uh, there may be some surprises there for you. We saw in the uh, presentation of Anna Ehrenstein just a couple of days ago, uh, how she was floating along the virtual, um, the virtual tour of the of the of the galleries, and yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a very uh, particular place, I suppose. Um, so yeah, that's uh, an invitation by Vera uh, to uh, to uh, come come back to Ireland and uh, navigate the, the National Gallery. I mean, I suppose it would be the same uh, the Museo del Prado. I mean, we were talking about um, uh, decolonizing the uh, the arts. I mean, um, one way to decolonize it uh, perhaps it will be to to blur uh, the content uh, to uh, act uh, as an act of uh, subversion. So, um, so uh, you know. To uh, to actually uh, fight against the, uh, the the whole idea of even presenting this work to the to the public, um, but uh, but yeah, this in this case obviously is not uh, is just for the copyright uh, issue. Um, okay, we can uh, we, we can leave it there um, if you are all happy, uh, Mona. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> And Mario, you're, you're you're happy. You want to comment something else? Um, okay. Okay. Um, I must uh, uh, remind you then that we have uh, um, a couple of events uh, coming up. We have uh, um, the second uh, situation from number two hundred two, which will be generally in Juarez uh, next Sunday, nineteenth of July, and uh, before that. We have the screen walk uh, with uh, Iris artist uh, Connor McGarrigal um, on the Wednesday, the 15th of July. And, uh, and of course, on Saturday, the 18th, we have the launch of our journal. Um, but I hope that uh, uh, you enjoyed uh, today's um, situation uh, 202. And uh, thank you, uh, Mario Santa Maria, for your performance. And thanks a lot to Mona Schubert and to all the uh, team, the curatorial team of uh, Photo Museum Winter Tool uh, for making this happen. And perhaps we un unmute everybody's uh, now if you um, want to say uh, goodbye. Bye. Okay, thanks very much. Bye, Mario. Mario. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.